E. And uh, so I'll chat for a few minutes while Jamma B changes some things around in the hopes that we can do a giz fizz. Oh, loud and clear. Wow. Salty corn bar. Can we hear what? Uh, um, we hear you with our eyes. <laughs> wow. Oh, are you seeing video too, chat room? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, I'm still in on Leah's monitor. Hey, Merce Angel. Oh, very funny, Captain J. <laughs> Video two. Thanks, mashed potato. Who needs quality? Exactly. We have a certain quality, and we live down to it every week. Video's a bit fuzzy. You sure your cat's not standing in front of your monitor? Oh. That is interesting. Other people see it fuzzy. Uh, I'm not sure why. Yeah, it don't look Let too fuzzy see. here. No, I don't think I look fuzzy here either. No, that's too much light. Not me. Uh, oh, furry. Oh, furry. Okay, furry. I, furry, I understand. But I ain't shaving that for nothing. I told you when I was doing... Uh, Live with Regis and Kathy Lee, they were doing a Halloween show uh, with all the regulars in costume. And Michael said, uh, you have any objection uh, of b being in drag? I said, fine. He said, and you'll shave your mustache, right? And I said, no. And he said, you will not shave your mustache for this show? And I said, no. I said, Give me a bouquet of flowers or a fan to hold in front of my face down here, and I'll still wear the drag. And he's, he was PO'd. Um, anyway, I didn't get booked for like three months after that. <laughs> so, so that's what can happen when you don't do what the producer thinks you should do. Not for any show. Yes, thank you, Eric Duckman. I ain't shaving this. Uh, all right, so... Uh, um, so? Oh, did you get... Uh, you have George Davis standing by? Uh, let me call. I have his okay. handle. Let me give him a you call. You have his handle, and, and uh, he called me during the week to make sure, and then I called him back just so we could make sure it was working in both directions. Hey, Myra. This is how bad it is in New York City. So Myra's threshold of pain is she doesn't leave the house if it's below freezing. So this is the fifth or sixth Saturday in a row where it has been below freezing. Uh, it's ridiculous. This is one of the worst winters ever. Uh, it's, it's one of the only reasons that I sold my boat at a good time because even though I winterize it, when the temperatures stay really down in the single digits for days at a time, I always go, I hope that antifreeze is not going to let something crack. Oh my gosh, Mike B. loves this. Win and Mike B., you're, you're local, right? Dennis likes the cold weather. I can tell you how cold it is. It's so cold, my electric bill just came, and it's $315. Hey, look at this. Oh, wow. George, you look great. Thank you. Well, should we start the show? We can start the show, yes. Okay. Uh, well, you have to start. Right, I do, I do. Uh, what is today? Today's the 5th, and this is episode 462. So... This is the Giz Fizz for Saturday, the 5th of February, 2022, episode 462. And it begins in three, two. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for regular old-fashioned Giz Fizz. Giz Fizz. The Giz Wiz. It's kind of like 
cheese whiz. It's the Giz Biz. And now your host, Matt Mattis Ryder and the Giz Whiz, Dick DiBartolo. Yes, you heard it right. It is regular, old-fashioned Giz Fizz. Both harpists are over COVID and are here to play for us. Okay, so we have a fun show. Okay, we have a chat room chef of the week. All right. Then we're going to do photo captions from the same celebrity chef. Uh, We're going to play match game. We're going to do some something from Guinness Book of Records, Al Jaffe's Snappy Answers. So we have a fun-filled show. But first, ladies and gentlemen, oh, where's my uh, sound effects machine? Uh, we have, you know, what? it's it's been so long since I used it. Oh, I figured, yeah, it's <laughs> it's been so long since I needed it. The batteries are dead. But anyway, what does it matter? Ladies and gentlemen, let us meet our chat room chef of the week. And it is George Davis. George, how are you? Chef Baker. Chef Baker. Yeah, (laughs) Chef Baker. Okay, so this is what happened. I'm good. We're going to show a little video. Uh, Probably three weeks ago now, George sent me a picture of some uh buns he had baked and i said oh they look incredible some rolls actually and he said oh, i'm gonna bake some and send them to you i said no well that's gonna be expensive and he said no i want to do it anyway here's the video and then we'll talk about a couple of weeks ago george was davis them. sent me a photo of some rolls he had just made oh i'm I telling said, the story too it looked amazing and then uh about a week ago he said i'm gonna bake some and, and mail them to you i said well wait that's going to be expensive. And he said, no, I want to do it. So anyway, he did it, all right? And also, I was lucky that the post office truck that delivered this knew because all it says is Dick and Dennis and then the building number, but no apartment number. Fortunately, they knew enough to ring my bell. So what is it like when you bake biscuits and then send them to the The rolls. A roll. Rolls. Yes. Thank Dennis you. corrected me. Uh, priority two day mail, by the way. I said, George, I'll pay for it. And George said, No, I want to pay for it. Yeah, I have to I have to stop this for a moment, Dick. Uh, yes. I noticed the custom watch face on your Apple Watch. That was pretty cool. Oh, it's a Samsung uh, watch. So. But yes, it's my logo. Uh, Very well. Mm. Oh, they're store bought. That's awesome. Look at that. Look at that oh. logo. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. Look at it. It glazed on top, too. They look great. These are two recipes. There are two recipes used to make these rolls. To heat one or two rolls in the microwave, set the timer for 15 seconds on high. Oh, <laughs> P.S. I put some milk bones in the bottom of the box <laughs> for Charlie. I can't Oh, they were for Charlie. I didn't anyway, read that look, part. I was going to say, Oh my! These some of these great. rolls are really hard. Oh, my God. How many did he bake? Oh, my. Oh, you can tell the two different recipes. Okay, these are, I'll have to ask them when we talk to them, all right? So these are, these are amazing. George, the great big thick the ones are trend. one kind, and then um, the flatter ones, you'll tell us when the video ends. Anyway, yes. Yes. George, thank you so much. And can you hit pause? you know how to hit pause on that? Mm-mm. 15 seconds. Mm-mm-mm. A whole nother little light. These are great. And this is without butter. I put butter on them. They're going to be amazing. I may set up a stand outside. (laughs) Sell them for two bucks each. George, thank you so much. Mm, 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 mm. 
Okay, so George, what was the difference between the big high ones and then the low down ones? Well, one is a milk recipe and the other one just a standard one. And I don't know, when they, when they come out of the pan, all the, there are 16 in the one on the bottom. You'll see they're all connected together. Yes. And the little smaller ones on top are a different recipe. So I wanted to make two different recipes just to give you a sample of what the different ones taste like. Well, and are, are the recipe are the ingredients very different between the two of them? No, the there's one recipe I added just a little bit of real vanilla and some cinnamon. Uh-huh. You'll oh, probably great. notice the taste. You'll probably notice the taste. I think that's the, the puffier ones. Right. George, you look great. What 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 camera are you using? You look super. Yes, I'm on my iPad Pro, and that's I just checked it out. It's a, a 14 megapixel camera. It's it's, it's great. studio quality. <laughs> wow, it's it's great. So, George, you wanted me to clear up uh, that you were never or are not a food stylist. Right? No. Because oh. one of the pictures we had in the on one of the shows, yes. When I give my caption for that picture, I just said I designed these and did that. But that was just me making a caption. I really never did do that as a job. But in college, um, when I was going through photo college, we did do some uh, food pictures and. You know, they're hard to set up and do. I did one with supposed to be um, a vanilla ice cream sundae. We had to use mashed potatoes because the heat from the lights would melt the vanilla ice cream if we use real ice cream. Yes. No, I, I uh, uh, at a show, I met a woman who made a book about... Uh, all different ways to make pizzas. And actually every recipe was looked like a pizza and the recipe was on the back. And I was talking to uh, how much money she spent because I, I think she self-published. And she said, I thought it was going to be cheap because the woman who helped me write the book, we decided we would do our own photos. <clears throat> and she said, the food looks so horrendous that we had to hire a food stylist and a professional photographer. And it was wildly expensive, but the stuff looked amazing. Yeah. So, so it's the kind of thing you're talking about is that <laughs> you have to do a little uh, bit of work to make stuff look good. Although, it's very, uh, yeah. No, go ahead. Go- no, I, I was going to say, go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. I, because I don't know if you remember, there was a big scandal about what companies were doing in ads. And I remember the one that I thought was, who would think to do that was a soup company that you could see all the vegetables in the soup because they filled the bottom of the bowl with marbles so <laughs> that the, everything that was all the ingredients in the soup would be at the top because the marbles was holding it up. And then there's some sort of a law, I don't know who it, who actually follows through on it, that food, pictures of food must only be what's in the box unless, and that's why you see on many labels, serving suggestion. And serving suggestion means... Not everything you see in this picture is in the box. Um, anyway, so George, what's new in your life besides bake? Do you bake a lot? Um, I When we have parties and stuff, my friends always say, you have to make your rolls because every time they everybody loves the rolls. So I do that all the time. And I've tried making pies and stuff, but I enjoy baking because... Baking with yeast and stuff, it's a live product. You feel it in your hands. It's just really enjoyable. And all the bakers understand what I'm talking about. (laughs) Okay. You know, I actually, um, 
Well, I, I actually know one of your friends, and, and he said, don't tell George I said this. But George, when they were saying bring the rolls, they were hoping you had the car. <laughs> but yeah. But they're still happy with your regular rolls. <laughs> uh, That's great. Anyway, chat room, do we have any questions for uh, you? Uh, open to taking some questions? Can I ask, can I say something before we do uh, that? You can say whatever you want. Okay. I would like to ask the chat room. It's so easy to do this, being chat room celebrity of the week. You learn a lot of stuff from people. There are interesting things about everybody. And I'd like to share something about me, what I found out from my brother in Australia. He did some um, ancestry stuff. And he found out that one of our relatives back in the 1500s was an explorer for uh, Elizabeth I in England. And she sent him out trying to discover the passageway, the Northwest Passageway to India. And on the way, he, f he discovered the Falcon Islands. So he was a discoverer of the Falcon Islands in August of 1592 and here's one of the pictures of one of the things he discovered he made a double quadrant uh, which is the early sextant can you see it there yeah the that was uh the early sextant so he discovered that and then they use that for many oh, years captain davies Rio. right on the bottom wow yeah 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 and that's interesting to find out different things about people. So the chat room, I'm sure somebody in the chat room has somebody famous in their in their ancestry that they share with us. So please get on board and be a chat room celebrity of the week. There's no no fear. You don't you're at home. You're not you don't have to be afraid of anybody. And we just enjoy hearing what you have to say. That's great. That is great. So chat room, think about that, okay? George, we can't go uh, uh, unless we ask you. Did we we ne did we ever ask you if you die what kind of dog you want to come back as because Captain J will not probably go to sleep gold, tonight. Probably a golden retriever. Oh, perfect. I think that they're would so probably be my choice too. Yeah, he's so um, friendly. All right, Mandy DeCon says, come on, folks, do it for George. Please. <laughs> um, all right. George, thank you so much for doing this. You, you, you really look well. great. Yeah, thank the, you. you're, you're, the, that camera, the camera in that. The camera is what makes me look good. <laughs> no. Well, you need something to start with, trust me. Uh, all right, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, let's hear it for George. I have no sound effects, George. Chat, chat, chef, the celebrity of the week, George Davis. Yay! Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> oh, I like that. Hoppo Marks yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, all right. So, Jammer B. Da -da That's my logo. Oh, it gets all blown out on, on this camera. So, it looks better in the video. Uh, anyway, it's the logo Dennis design with yeah, my, it looked awesome. I I yeah, thought it oh, it was an Apple Watch with a custom face, but it's no, it's yeah. an Android watch with a. Custom no, you can face. do it on a uh, yeah, and the, the problem is, um, if you uh, sync it with a new phone, it erases everything on the watch and brings it back to factory specs. And it's been so long since I uploaded the face, I don't even remember how to do it. So I just. I just live with an old watch because I also love the face on, on the I love the face on the face of my watch. All right, so we're going to continue with George with his photos. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's do photo number one. Let's not. <laughs> well, it doesn't work. Photo one turned out to be too low res. So let's start with photo two. Photo number two from George Davis is. Oh, okay. It's a shelf, shelf uh, of an artist because there are stainless steel 
containers, one with pencils of every color. <laughs> Someone like scissors, probably a dozen scissors, paintbrushes, rulers, exacto knives, okay? A shelf with everything an artist would need and use, all right? And you come up with any sort of a caption for this photo. School's in. Dr. Mom says, too organized. Tools of the trade. Organized for creativity. Mandy the Clown's makeup kit. Uh, next step, create something. My desk, but organized. The Bob Ross collection. No number two. Art Godfunkel's shelf. Can I borrow a pencil? Hey, do you have any scissors? Nah, I have none. Looks like my kitchen table with all my pencils and pens, Myra. Someone found out how I write the bills in Congress. What a tool. Now, where do I start? Tools of choice. This is the art class before the kids arrive. Clear and sale at Michael's. <laughs> Don't touch. Oh, this is good. Where's the plaid pencil? I'm a starving artist because all my pots are holding tools. Uh, draw me like one of your French girls. I like the curvy ruler. Uh, where's the erasers? They're going by fast. Left-handed pencils. Any left-handed pencils? Where do I put the erasers? Uh, color my world. Oh, use a 222. Now, if I only had some paper. Uh, George baked these to look like art supplies. Baking with colors. Putting those in containers is the limit of my art skills. All this, and I don't have a canvas. <laughs> Believe it or not, I stole all these. And Captain J says, the tools Dennis used to make Dick's watch face. Uh, oh, and another one uh, redacted said, tools to create the Gizwiz watch face logo. And we'll end with J. Mez to sketch your life story. Uh, okay, George said, for containers full of art supplies, my caption is, all I need now is some paper and some canvas, and I'm all set to show my talent. Well, we got paper and we got canvas, so you got some matches. Uh, photo three is, um, it's the woods. Looks like a path through some trees. And leaning against one of the trees is a bike and a helmet. No person around, okay? Trees and I guess a forest. Lonely bike, no rider leaning against the trees. Um, heck of a place to get a flat. Taking a nature break. Bike parking. Oh, here's another one. Excuse me, I'm taking a bathroom break. Lost bike on a lost bike on a bike trail. Myra's commute. Got to take a nature break. A place to take a walk. Where I would like to be. Little Red Riding Hood's bike in a forest. I guess I'll walk the rest of the way. Nap time. Oh, two nap times in a row. Got it tied up just in case it tries to get away. All the city bikes are being used. I wish I had toilet paper, pee break, nature call, sampling the maple, another abandoned bike overgrown by a tree, the road less traveled because, oh, it's going so fast I'm losing them, uh, the bike lamented, where, oh, where is my peddler? Bigfoot parked his bike here, George's bike when he stopped to take the photo, Going in the woods, literally, where bikes go when they want to be alone. The rapture just happened. The loner from my Buick. Remote bike exchange location. Pitching a loaf, the baker, where the Wizard of Oz witch landed. Well, at least I don't need a lock here. <laughs> bike in the middle. And we'll end with, and then I hopped on a unicorn. Uh, all right, so George said, for the bike parked in the forest next to some trees, my caption is, 
Um, I'm glad to find my thousand dollar bike. I just walked down to the lake to look around for an hour, got lost coming back. Um, okay. Photo number four. Ah, okay. What are they? Bratwurst? Does George say? Uh, sausages. All right, guys, cooking sausages on a outdoor grill. Man making sausages on an outdoor grill. Um, where's the mustard? Superb Al barbecue pregame. Sliced wieners, anyone? Dinner's ready. Brats on the Barbie. These are the worst, W-U-R-S-T. Can't wait for springtime. I have a grill friend, uh-uh. Soyant sausages, who let the dogs out. Bonjour. The CA is the most, I am not, uh, sausage feast. Uh, goes well with George's rolls. You might want to stoke that fireman. Where's the missing link? Ouch. Johnsonville needs skewers. Sausage gumbo, here I come. Wish I had those tongs that go click, click. It's alive. Waiting on George's fresh baked rolls. Lorraine is working on the food. Spring can't come soon enough. Yeah, I got a good roll. Where's the beef? Odd coals he's cooking with. Well, that's wood, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the coals aren't ready yet. Dwindle as in Bobbit. Oh. Dog perfume. This is no way to bake a baguette. <laughs> Which one is for Charlie? Sausage Fest. Where cows are stuffed. And did you use the spiralizer on the sausages? And Mandy the Clown will end with, this is bear candy. All right. For the man cooking sausages on a grill, do I tell my caption is, I decided to cook sausages instead of hamburgers. I'm going to have it with potato salad my grandmother made. Yummy. Uh, okay. Photo five is a, looks like a single mushroom in a forest. A mushroom in a forest. I'm looking, oh, George said gigantic mushroom. Okay. Oh, I guess maybe it is. All right. Gigantic mushroom in a forest. <laughs> Man, the con said, George is making me crazy with the food. Room for more shroom. Room for mush. Quick, everyone under the mushroom before it rains. Toadstool. Too small to be nuclear. A mushroom grows in Brooklyn. Lovely shroom. Toadstool. Toadstool for rent, up oh, too fast. Uh, Elon Musk, new space design. Eat it, I dare you, Close Encounters, beginning of a fairy house. Of course it's edible, you first. If a mushroom falls in a forest, does it make a sound? Toadstool, stay away. Attack of the mushroom people, a person. Little toadstool on the prairie. <laughs> Seat for a frog. Not infected. One of Katy uh, Perry's dancers. That's a frog umbrella. You found my hiding place. Last trip out of the forest. That is one large fungus among us. My luck, the only mushroom for miles and it's poisonous. I'm looking around for Alice and the caterpillar, says Becky. One last magic mushroom. One side makes you larger, one size makes you smaller. Is the turkey done yet? Must have been a tree there long ago. They grow where rotting roots are. <laughs> and we'll end with black rock. I found the mushroom. Where's my bike? All right. 
George says, for the gigantic mushroom, my caption is, I found this five-pound mushroom in the forest and we'll find out if it's edible. I'll give it away to someone because I don't like mushrooms. Uh, okay, and now photo number six. Um, chat room, what kind of fruit is that? Oh, George says, this is the arbutus fruit, A-R-B-U-T-U-S. This is the arbutus fruit, coffee, grapes, coffee in the raw, says Dr. Mom. George, you and Chad, is it the arbutus fruit, berries, java rava? They are non-dirigible plums. Not what I meant by dingleberries. <laughs> uh, the tangerines, they're berryful. Ain't that the berries? First you wander in for a few hours before you find that bike, kumquat tree. It's the rare orange marble tree. They're crunch berries. What do you think? These grow on trees? Berry, berry, oh, berry, pretty photo, mini pumpkins. A fruitful episode of Giz Fizz. Uh, they're Halle berries, cherries, I hope. They do make wild animals drunk. Eat one, I dare you. Tiny pumpkin berries. Snow below, soon to be appearing in that Starbucks near you. Young orange watermelon tree. This tree has been very, very good to me. Barry had a little lamb. Manilow's berry. Marion berries. Berry high to pick. I need a straw for these berries. Oh, my God. Logan Dragon Eyes on the outside. And we'll end with Gumby. Famous last words. I can make beer out of that. Uh, George says, for the Arbutus fruit, my caption is, it's saucy, sweet, and tastes like figs. Uh, and George ends with three short facts. The hearts of shrimp are found in their heads. What? A snail can sleep for up to three years. The fingerprints of koalas are so indistinguishable, indistinguishable, indistinguishable from humans, they have been confused at different crime scenes. Wait a minute. Koalas have committed crimes? And blamed humans? Yeah, and <laughs> that sounds like a great plot for a movie. The humans are being framed by the koalas. The koala crime spree. Um, and George ends with, oh, oh, okay. Oh, it is a real thing. It's an evergreen shrub or small tree in the flowering plant family, native to the Mediterranean region. The tree is also well known for its fruit. So I guess you don't eat these things, right? They bear some resemblance to the strawberry, hence the common name strawberry tree. All right. Boy, we learned so much with, with uh, George. Uh, George said, I enjoyed looking up these photos for all of you uh, to caption. See you next time and hear your great answers. Stay happy. Bye, George. Oh, that was great, George. Uh, thank you. Uh, um, okay, so we're going to... Oh, you know what? Last time, we're going to do something from the Guinness Book of Records. All right. So I realized last time I should actually show you the picture, okay? This is from the Guinness Book of World Records. This is the world's largest potato gratin, <laughs> okay? I will give you the dimensions... You guess how much it weighs. 
The largest potato gratin or gratin is 30 feet 9 by 6 foot 6. And it weighs... Ah. Oh, yeah, I need another dimension. You gave me the uh, width. Wait a minute. You gave me the width and the length. You know what? They don't. So is it six inches deep or six feet deep? You know what? You're absolutely <laughs> right. Let's, let's say it's like six inches deep or four inches deep. Because, All right, let's say that. Yeah, because it's not, I mean, yeah, it's got to fit on your plate, right? 32 <laughs> feet by six feet. Yeah, just two dimensions on here. Um, all right, so how much does this weigh? Actually, I, I, I now know the answer because I was looking for <laughs> uh, 3,000 pounds, 1,100 pounds, and loving it more than the 525. This, uh, no one's there yet, but you're a, a lot of a lot of very good guesses. Wonton. Oh, that's funny. No, don't forget chat room. Thirty-two uh, nine inches long, six feet six inches wide, and we're guessing at the depth. What did you say? Three feet? No, no, no. Uh, six inches. Six inches. Yeah, deep. Like, oh, yeah, that's like on right. your plate. If you look at it on your plate. Yeah, it has to be a pin. Yeah, different. you're absolutely right. It weighs ten crisp follies. <laughs> uh, uh, um, heavier than a bread box. Fifteen John candies. No, I think you're supposed to give it in pounds, not in celebrities. <laughs> Seven thousand pounds. Uh, uh, um, we're getting close, chat room. Uh, uh, um. All right, we're gonna. Well, uh, so, Jamma B, what is your guess? Two thousand pounds. Two thousand pounds. Uh, let me see who is closest. Oh, uh, Eric Duckman. It's between Jim Tez and Eric Duckman. One went a little below it. One went a little above it. It weighed. 6,636 pounds. That's a lot of spud. That's a lot of spud. And did you know that there is a potato museum in Washington, D.C.? No. With over 2,000 potato artifacts. Potato More artifacts. More learning. Potato More artifacts. Le- <laughs> oh, do we do, do we have Becky's? Uh, oh my God, Dingaling! Do you have it? That sounds so like a Becky, Chuck Berry song. <laughs> Becky found this commercial. I never heard of this, but if I was a kid, I probably would have liked it. But when you think about what kids were excited about back then and today, anyway, uh, here's the uh, what, what's the name of the gadget again, uh, Jim and B? Uh, the Dingaling robots. Oh, the Dingaling robots, ladies and gentlemen, right here on the stage, it's the Dingaling robots. You're witnessing the creation of an incredible new world, a world of unbelievable excitement and fun, the world of the Dingaling. The Dingaling, here they come, the whole fantastic bunch of them. Holy smoke, what's going on? It's Dingaling firemen coming to the rescue. He's got his own built-in pumper to save the day. Dingaling Shoe Shine gives you the brightest shine you've ever seen. Dingaling Answer Man's got all the answers in his head. Push the lever and he'll tell your future. Dingaling Spy <laughs> hides in the shadows and discovers your secrets with his hidden camera. <laughs> Dingaling Rocky is right on target. He's one sharpshooter that doesn't miss. There's Dingaling Chef, and here comes Dingaling Gopher. Dingaling Chef salts your food, and Dingaling Gopher <laughs> serves it to you. Dingaling Construction oh Worker God. keeps the whole place shaken with his jumping jackhammer. But wait, here comes the greatest Dingaling of them all, presenting King Ding, mighty ruler of the Dingaling world. What's this little guy doing? He's in King Ding's elevator and is riding up through the inner power plant. He's there. He becomes King Ding's actual brain. 
Watch him move his control levers and make the mighty King Dane go. With boys all over America right behind him to help him perform his tasks and rule the ding-a-ling world. The ding a whole new concept created for fun and excitement, complete with special skyways, vehicles, and accessories. And a $3 million TV campaign will introduce the world of the ding for what it is, the most incredible fun idea ever to hit the toy market. Oh, my God. Stand back, world. There's a whole new one on the way. The wild, wonderful, wacky world of the ding <laughs> Has anybody ever heard of this? Now, I, I looked on eBay and there are ding for sale. So they, it did get made. Yeah, I know. Have uh, <laughs> That commercial is a riot. This whole robot to put salt on your food. <laughs> yeah, I think so, Black Rock. No, it was not a mad satire. I remember Mr. Robot, too. Um, oh, you know what? I'll just do this when you said a mad satire. Okay, QE2. All right. So going through the warehouse is kind of fun. I found this. It's from August 8, 1991. So took Bill uh, years ago, Bill Gaines and his wife, Annie, uh, for a ride down the Hudson, and the QE2 is leaving. So uh, we circled the QE2 a couple times, and uh, then that Monday or a couple of days later, Bill called me in and said, so that little trip down the Hudson River cost me ten grand." I said, yeah, why would that be? I paid for the gas. And he said, "Cause Andy wants to go on the QE too." So I had to book had to book a nice cabin, <laughs> and then my kids wanted to go, so I'm in for ten grand. And I knew a, a guy in uh, PR, and Kennard was one of his accounts. And already by by 1991, ship companies had stopped doing letting people on to have parties because suddenly they realized if we can turn the ship around like in six hours you know we can get extra cruises in so i called him up and i said listen the publisher of mad's going on the qe2 can you get me on the ship and he said oh god it's in port for six hours he said do you really want to do this and i said oh it would be it would be great i just want to play a, a joke and he said, all right, let me see if what I can do. So he called me back and he said, yeah, I'll, I'll send you some passes and some things. And I said, do you have a copy of the ship's newsletter? And he said, that's easy. That We have a bunch of them here. So he sent me a copy of it. And it's all, you know, it's all in colors with the logo and stuff. So, and John Putnam back then, the art director. And, and I wrote this silly thing. And I, I told Annie Gaines what I was going to do. I was going to hide. Uh, I hid in the shower. And so they come into the cabin on the ship and Annie Gaines picks up the... Sh she said, Bill, the ship's newsletter, I can't believe this. There's a question and answer thing from the captain. Uh, we asked the captain of the Queen, the QE2 how he would handle an emergency like the one that befell the Oceanus that sunk. Captain Ra uh, Ronald Warwick replied, if the QE2 started to flood and started to capsize and I became aware of the situation, I would immediately order the waitresses to stop and take the hot pots of coffee off the table. So Billy, Billy said, Annie, well, let me see that. He said, this, this cannot be the real ship's newspaper. Why would they ever do this? This is, like something, this is like something mad would do. And I said, oh, Billy, stepping out of the bathroom, like Dick D. Bartolo would write. <laughs> and he, of course, broke out laughing. He said, 
leave it to you. How could you possibly get on this ship? We wanted to have company on the ship. I said, Billy, you have to know people in PR. Uh, anyway, that was great fun. All right, so let's da -dum. do some logo. Oh, my gosh. Chat room, I have no idea. Name the brand. Name the brand. Okay. Boy. Oh, you know what? I... I think Dennis had this once. Jamma B, you have any idea? I wish Dennis was down here. He would know. I, I don't. I, I Somebody said... Uh, um cream cheese or a muffin i, I mean it's it's it's, yeah. a, it's a food product in some kind of foil yes yes uh tea looks like it might be a brie but it's a we're looking Orson. for the name of a company hold it closer to the camera yeah no i don't recognize it okay borson can't see it brie ivy cookies and cream bar soap Jiffy Pop, Gordon's Fish <laughs> Filet, what? Stale yogurt, a muffin top, Hostess. Mr. Dave says looks cheesy. Oh, chat room. Several of you have it. Most of you have it with the wrong spelling, but it is Borson Cheese, B-O-U-R-S-I-N. Huh. Okay, what kind of cheese is that? What kind of cheese is Borson cheese? Anybody got any ideas? Camembert. No. Myra Joyce says she loves brie. Wish I had my magnifying glass here. Let me look over here. Uh, 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 I do have my magnifying glass. With my aging eyes, this is the, the size of the type on the cards. Uh, Munster, Roquefort, Sharp, Cream Cheese, Blue Cheese. Uh, you know what? Gournay. Okay. G-O-U-R-N-A-Y. Yeah, Okay. All right, uh, so that was hard. Uh, um, we're going to do another one, and then we'll do a snappy answer. Oh, this I know. Um, the brand, please. The brand. Gournay, did you say that after I said it? Or maybe Eric Tuckman knew ahead of time. Uh, 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 uh. uh Jemma B, you know? Uh, I think it's popular in Hawaii. I did see somebody answer Soylent. And I do want to let everyone know the movie Soylent Green takes place in this year, 2022. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, chat room, you're pretty good. It is, as Matron says, stop spamming us. It is spam. Low sodium it spam. It is a can of low sodium spam. I don't know. How could anybody know this? But I'll just ask it because it's so stupid. The 48th largest state consumes more spam products than any other. What state is it? How could anybody possibly know? Well, how could we not know? Everybody knows that. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, well, what is it? The 48th part. It's out in the ocean. It's a little island out in the ocean. Wait a minute. <laughs> so you're the only one who didn't know. What? How? 
Did you see the chat room? Were you able to see the answer when I held the card up? No, no, no. I knew it, Dick. I knew. I do not get it. Well, I, there's a good reason. I'm glad I didn't know this one. Bill took us to Hawaii. God, I didn't know. What did we eat there? Oh, Padre, as Jay just told us. Okay. It's common knowledge. Spam, bacon, sausage, and spam. Spam, <laughs> bacon, spam, spam, bacon, and spam. I don't like spam. <laughs> oh, I have never eaten spam. Never. I, uh, you ever read the ingredients? Oh my God. Okay. Um, oh, that's so funny. In a Monty Python sketch, which group of hungry diners sing spam, 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 wonderful spam? Okay. In a Monty Python sketch, which group of hungry diners sing spam, 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 wonderful spam? Not the lumberjacks, not the Mounties. Jim B, do you know? Uh, are they twits? Are they what? Twits. No, but the chat room, half of them have it. Vikings love spam. Oh, yeah, the Vikings. The Vikings. Bacon, spam, and sausage without the spam. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. I don't... Ah! 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 Oh, they cut the... it too short. Oh. Hey, I'm trying... It's... I've been trying to find the song, but each of the clips I'm finding on YouTube seems to cut it out. So, oh, yes, okay. you're right. It was the Vikings. The Vikings. All right, we're going to do a I'm not saying you're stupid. I'm not saying you're stupid. How many teeth does a giant white shark have? How many teeth... Boy, it's a lot. No, that's us. 32 is us. Too many. I don't know. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with... Uh, God, they must have at least 60... 120. I'm going to go 120. Uh, 200. <laughs> Man, did a clown says, enough to make dentures impossible. 300. Stuart says, 789 in front, just seven in the back. Captain J says, I have six in my knee. Dale Paco says, 6666. Six, six, six. That's funny. The stupid thing has 280. <laughs> Swift Bird says 242, not counting 30 wisdom teeth. Uh, RF Guy says his own teeth or from things he ate. Too many to cap. Um, Jamma B, any idea? I'll say 121. Oh, you okay. My answer is 120 uh, at the bottom. Okay. All right. How many teeth does a great white shark have? Oh, my God. Uh, Toad Sloth. Toad Sloth is close. Um, 300. Okay. <laughs> 300 teeth. That's a lot of teeth. Oh. What year saw the birth of cigarettes sold in packs? What year, I guess we can reword it, what year was cigarettes 
so started to be sold in packs. Boy, it's got to be early on. 1919. Boy, uh, only because in old movies there was smoking. All right. I'm going to go with 1920. Oh, my God. Um, World War II rations. Jeremy B., what's your answer? The I'll year... say 1921. <laughs> Are you always adding one to what I write? Well, yeah, because, you know, it's a... Uh, you don't want to go over. Like pri yeah, uh, price, price is right. Is right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, price is right. Yeah. Okay. Now, I think Dennis did smoke. I I smoked one cigarette once for twenty seconds, and we were. I don't know. It was at NBC, and someone said, "Dick, can you run? Can you run over here and be a security guard?" Where the camera's just going to walk on by, and you'll be standing in front of a prison cell smoking. And I said, "I'll do it," but I don't even know how to hold a cigarette. <laughs> Back then, you could show people smoking, and that was my entire uh, existence smoking. So the answer is basically, I never smoked. Uh, Gumby says, I smoked one for 10 seconds also. Um, all right, Jammer B, your answer was? Uh, 120, uh, 1921. Uh, okay, I've got a lot of very close and maybe right answers. The year that was the birth of modern cigarettes sold in packs is 1913. Lucky 1913. Lucky 90, yeah. Oh, Titus is actually posting the answer. Okay. Um, bum, bum. All right. Out of how many chicken eggs? What? I, I don't know. Uh, Oh, I, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> One out of how many chicken eggs has a double yolk? One out of blank, fill in the number, has a double yolk. I'm going first. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to say 30. And you can say 31 okay. if you want. One out of how many chicken eggs has double yolks? One in a million, I'll tell you. The yolk was on the uh, chicken. Uh. One out of 300, one out of 45, one out of 100. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> 800. Oh, you should know. You're right, Jim Tez. Jim B should know this. He lives uh, where the chicken and egg parade is. Gosh. <laughs> chicken and eggs everywhere. Yeah, so Jamma B, how many out of, uh, uh, one out of how many chicken eggs has a double yolk? 30. Wow. Wow, are you wrong? <laughs> <laughs> one out of every 1,000 eggs has a double yolk. Yay, Titus. Anyway, okay. Uh, let me get Dennis down here, and we'll do a snappy answer while he gets ready. Is uh, Alex in? Calling him now. Calling Alex. Okay. Okay, so here is your snappy answer. We'll cover Al Jaffe's answer. It is a swamp. And the princess is saying to the frog, would you like me to change you back into a prince? Okay, and the 
frog comes up with the snotty answer. Would you like me to change you back into a prince? And you said, uh, 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 I have to find it. Let's see. Out of my face, hair. Good call. No, I'd like you to kiss my blank. Uh, no, I'd like to turn you into a frog. Not if I have to marry you. I can't think of anything. Oh, I like eating flies. Not with that breath. No, I decided I'd like the taste of flies. What's the catch? Oh, that's funny. No, I'm going to change you into a frog. For those knockers, sure. I'd rather be a cat. No, thanks. I like eating frogs. No, I'd rather have you change into a frog. I kind of like flies. Lily pad will sink and I'll die. Would you like me to return you to a frog? I've grown fond of flies. That's the predominant answer. No, I was a king before. Well, I'll have two yolks. No, these warts are appealing. No, but I'd like you as a frog. Uh, I would like you to change me into the frog formerly known as Prince. <laughs> no, I don't kiss on the first date. And give back all that Nigerian money. Yes, I never was a prince. What else you got? <laughs> That's very funny. What else you got? Uh, let me find that picture again. And uh, uh, uh. Oh. oh, I lost my place in this book. Mm -mm -mm. Um, oh, Don, where is that? All right. No, send over the next princess. That's funny. You know what? I cannot find it. That is a riot. All right. I remember the answers. Oh, here it is. Okay, um, uh, all right, let's see what Al Jaffe wrote. Would you like me to change you back into a prince? The princess asked the frog, and the frog says, what? And give of this terror-ridden swamp for the life of ease and security? Are you out of your mind? No, princesses are a dime a dozen, but how many talking frogs are there? Oh, no, I'd rather see you changed into a frog. So we got a bunch of people who matched Al Jaffe. Uh, okay. All right. Dennis is here. Uh, uh, um. Alex is here. <laughs> uh, and Alex is here. Very good. Uh, uh, um. uh, this is so annoying. I, I do need a secretary. I do need a secretary. Um, only because I picked the questions out before. <laughs> See, the, I have sheets of questions, and then I straighten the desk up before I do Leo, and I put the old ones with the new ones, and they get all mixed up. Uh, okay, did you know? Oh, it's another fact. Did you know you'll never die of thirst in the desert if you can find a cactus with a blank inside? You'll never die of thirst in the desert if you can find a cactus with a blank inside. Uh, yeah. Why would you never starve on the desert? All right, Dennis, is, uh, Dennis has his own question. Why would you never starve on the desert? Because of the sandwiches there. <laughs> Did you hear that chat room? Why would you never starve in the desert? Because of the sandwich <laughs> is there. Uh, okay, you know you never die at thirst in the desert if you can find a cactus with blank inside. Oh, we'll start with Alex. Alex. You'll never uh, die if you find a wet bar inside. Okay, very good. Uh, we'll go to... 
<laughs> uh, uh, you'll never die of thirst in the desert if you can find cactus with vodka inside. I said if you can find a cactus with a water faucet inside. Charlie, we're just starting. You have a long way to go. Jam or B? Uh, or canteen. Okay. Oh, no. Did you hear what happened to the poor tin man? Oh, no. His blank rusted off. <laughs> well, I think that's impossible. Tin, can tin rust? Okay. Do you hear what happened to the poor tin man? His blank rust rusted off. Uh, uh, uh. Charlie, not yet, Charlie. All right. There are a couple of family... <laughs> there are some family-friendly ways around this. Charlie. Charlie, not yet. Not yet. In a few minutes, okay? Come on. A few more minutes. After this, two more questions. Um, his fat axe, his limbs, his hinges, his carburetor, his oil can, his head, dipstick... His nuts, his nose, his can, his Zerk fitting, Toto, uh, his beak, eyebrows, ex-wife. Oh, okay. Jeremy B, we're going to start with you. Did you hear what happened to the poor tin man? His blank rusted off hat. Mm. Actually, that's a good answer. His hat was a funnel, right? Uh, I said I got at least one match. His nose rusted off. Dennis? I, I, I... Dennis said he got a match. Yeah, with Wendell. With... Oh, with Wendell. Nuts and bolts. There it goes right by right now. Um, and Alex. His funnel. You got a match. Match hat. Yay. Uh, that is that is his hat. Okay. You know, a fish was caught in really polluted water when you try to cook it and it blanks. You know, a fish was caught in really polluted water when you try to cook it and it blanks. <laughs> Uh, explodes. Oh, explodes is good. Oh, that's better than what I have. Catches fire. Makes you sick. Explodes. Oh, no. Cooks you. Self-ignites. Explodes. That's a better answer than I have. Oh, okay. I finally got a match. Okay. When it talks, when it slaps you. When it cooks you, melts the pan, holds up a protest sign, smells like Clorox, <laughs> leaves an oil slick made in Detroit, creates a mushroom cloud, walks away. Um, all right, well, okay. You know the fish you caught has uh, in polluted water, has too many chemicals when you cook it and it... And it Blanks, stooge, ah, walks away. And those couple of other matches. Jamma B, you said you cook it and the fish explodes. You got a ton of matches. Dennis says, I don't know if you got any matches. Dennis said, if you try to cook it and it dissolves. And Alex said, and it glows. You got a lot of matches too. This was great. Uh, a lot of people eating polluted fish. Charlie, this question and then you, okay? This question, then you. <laughs> Charlie, just, Charlie just absolutely breaks me up. Um, oh, okay. The city commission has said, this city is so broke. How broke is it? We can't afford manhole covers. We're Covering the openings with giant blanks. The commissioner said, this city is so broke. Charlie, you're next. 
We can't. Yes, you're next. Yes. We're covering the openings with giant blanks. Yes, Charlie, you're next. Yeah, what? A <laughs> Charlie said, I've waited in the green room long enough. Uh, lady, oh, that's funny. Lady hole covers, cow pies. Corks, shower caps, condoms, pancakes is good. Pizza pans. Charlie, you're next. Hopes and dreams. Oh, my God. Red tape. Slim Pickens LPs. Umbrellas. Um, rats. Okay, the commissioner said we have no money left to buy manhole covers. We're going to cover the openings with giant Dennis. Giant. Oh, Giant said, Dennis said, giant pizzas. And Dickie says, giant pizzas. I guess we both love pizzas. And Charlie's next. And Jamma B said, we're covering them with giant rubber balls. Okay. And Alex, we're covering the openings with giant waffles. Very good. Very good. That was very good. Chat room. This is actually, this is almost an hour and 10 minutes anyway this is great fun which means the end of the show and time to meet charlie the dog oh my god oh my god charlie hang on buddy hey. -da -da. oh my goodness look at me oh boy oh wow look at this look at me Da -da. oh yeah oh my <laughs> Oh, I look at them, Charlie. Yeah, look at them out there. The people love you. Yeah, you have to look into the camera. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh. Wow. What a what a happening. What what an amazing dog. Yeah. Look at those. It's the bat ears. It's the bat dog. It's the bat dog. Yeah, Charlie. You know the. Do you know the word chicken? You know the word turkey. No, he knows he's not. He knows he's not near the refrigerator. All right, Charlie. Let's just show your tail one more time. We, uh, where's your tail, Charlie? Where's the tail? Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's it. <laughs> All right, Charlie. You are so great. I think he can get down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What a guy. Yes, that's right. Toad Sword said, one of these appearances, he'll dance. He just, he's a, I, I don't know what he thinks. He couldn't wait to get down here. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's a showbiz dog. He, he, he just is amazing. He is the happiest dog alive. He's just so funny. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's see. Uh, this week, Giz Wiz is Friday, okay? This coming week, uh, Giz Wiz is Friday. Uh, last week, Chad got out just in time. I emailed him, did the flight get out? And he said, we just uh, were airborne. There was a big, uh, Chad had to move his flight a day early. Actually, Delta called and said, there's a terrible storm coming. We're canceling 500 flights. Do you want to fly out a day early? There's no charge, uh, additional charge. So he got out just in time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Giz regular, old-fashioned Giz Fizz with the Twin Harp Sisters. Uh, this is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman, Dick D. Bartolo, Dennis Wonderlin, Charlie the Dog, Jamma B, Alex Gumpel. Becky, Beatmaster, Myra, Mandy the Clown, Dr. Mom, Demos, uh, N4BR, Jim Tez, RF Guy Morgus, Travis M, Stooge, ZX, Gumby, Chumley, uh, Eric Duckman, Mike B., uh, redacted and Loke, of course, Loke and Dale Paco. Brought to you by Turtle Wax 
it's not just for turtles anymore. And Myra, if I forgot. Bye. We'll see you all next week. Mm. Thanks, Jammer B. That was great fun. Thank you, Dad. Chat room, you're very always. funny. And thank you, George, Alex. thank you. Alex, you look good. Everything well? Okay. <laughs> okay. Alex is not allowed to talk on camera. Otherwise, oh, we have to pay him. wasn't set up. <laughs> Everything is swell. Thank you for asking. Oh, good. Very good. Uh, okay. Dick's Wardrobe by Samantha's of Van Eyes. Thank you, Dad. All right, chat room. This is great. This chat room is great. Jim and B, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 And with that, it's time for the tech guy. So if you didn't see it this morning, it's new.